Today, I want to take you through the process of installing subversioning or SVN on your local computer. And the, the reason that you'd want to do this is because you'll be able to make incremental backups of the project that you're working on. So let's say you're about to do something that you're afraid might break your, your game project that you're working on. You can do a quick backup, also called a commit, to your SVN repository and it will only send the files to that repository that have changed. And so you'll have an exact current copy of your project at that point in time. You then can go and make changes, play with the system. And if something breaks, you have the ability to revert back to the exact copy that you started with. If you find that what you were trying to do works, you can turn around and, and commit those changes. And then that's your new working copy. So. Uh, there is a, if most people that will be watching this probably are using Windows. So there's a free program called Visual SVN and it's a server and it will allow you to host this on your local computer. You can even choose to host it uh, on, to have the repository that it backs up to. So this is not, we're going to be, not going to be where your main Unreal files are stored but this will be where the backup goes. So maybe you have a slower external hard drive or something that you want those files to store on that has a lot of space. You could set the repository on there and it will only send the backup files there. It won't use that when you're running and editing and working inside of Unreal. So if you go to visualsvn.com and then you'll see on the right hand side, Visual SVN Server, click download, and then choose the 64-bit version. I've already downloaded it, so we'll go ahead and go to the next piece of software. So this is the server. And then I like to use one called Tortoise SVN for the client. Uh, this is usable not only with this Visual SVN, this is also usable with, if, you're one, if you have a Linux server or some other host, this is a very good, this is my preferred SVN client and go to tortoisesvn.net, click downloads. You can choose the latest 64-bit version, which currently is 1.11.1. .1. So you'd click that and download. So let's go ahead and run through, through these really quick. I'll go ahead and start with Visual SVN. Uh, we'll just choose the default options. It will install kind of a web server on your local computer. Uh, so you want to do the Visual SVN and administrative tools because you want to have the ability to set this up. Uh, you do not need to open unless you want other people outside of your local network to be able, or even you could have other computers in your local network use this. But if you're wanting people outside of your local network to be able to access this SVN, uh, you just would need to, first of all, make sure you use secure passwords because you would want to be careful that, that someone isn't able to get your password and then download, download all of your files. Uh, so on here, choose the standard version. You're not going to be using enterprise, which would be the paid version, uh, which has active directory, lo directory login. So if you had a login server for windows, uh, windows environment, you could choose that. But for what you're doing for this local version, choose standard edition. Uh, and it's going to, going to install on your C drive by default, but what you want to look at is the repository. So the E drive is my external drive that I'm using that has the most space. So it's going to be e colon backslash repositories. If you have a different folder that you want to have this go to, you can choose that here. Uh, have put, select the drive, whatever folder you want it to be. But this is where those backups are going to go. You can have more, multiple projects on this. So you can set up a repository for each project and these will all back up and I'll show you the process of doing that. Uh, choose 443 for the port. That will be your default HTTPS port. Uh, for some reason, if you didn't want to use HTTPS, maybe you already have something running on HTTPS for, on your local computer, and this is a conflict, you could turn it off, but I would recommend that you keep it on if you can and choose 443, or if you have something on 443, you could choose 8443 as an alternate. And then backups, this is allows you to make full backup, backups of your whole repository. So maybe you want to send those offsite or you want to send them to another uh, computer you could choose where those backups go. Just make sure it's a place that if you have a large project has a decent amount of space. So let's go ahead and do next and install. 
you will have to confirm administrator privileges to the install. And it should finish installing. And this is the server. Next, we will go ahead and go to the client, but let's first set up the, the user and the repository that we're gonna use. So by default, it's check start Visual SVN Server Manager, click finish, and then click yes. And that's just allowing it to open up this panel. All right, so go ahead and open up the repositories tab. You'll have to hit the expand arrow and you'll notice that there's nothing in there. Once you start to have repositories, you'll be able to hit that arrow and then whatever repositories you add will be listed under this folder. So uh, let's go ahead and add one right now. Right click on repositories and choose create new repository. We're gonna choose a regular repository. You're not gonna have this distributed over multiple computers and everything as far as the server itself. So choose a regular repository next and then pick a name for it. This is gonna be related to this particular project. So we're gonna call this Unreal Game for now. Uh, this will be whatever your project is, but I'm just gonna call this one Unreal Game. And then choose Empty Repository. By default, I'm gonna choose all subversion users have read write access. If for some reason you have multiple projects that you're gonna to wanna to have and everybody doesn't have full access to all the different projects, you wanna give maybe one person access to a certain project and not to another project, you would then either choose nobody has access and then later go in and add those users, or you could choose custom permissions and create one just for yourself for now. But I'm gonna say, because I'm the only one using this locally, all subversion users have read write access. I'll click create. Now it has created a repository. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. And this is allow, would allow me to browse those files uh, that would be in there. Currently we have no files in there, but I haven't set up a username and password either. And so before I am able to log in, I'm gonna have to set up a user for this. So go ahead and click back into Visual SVN click finish, and then click users. See, it's an empty list. So right click somewhere in the blank area or right click on users and choose create user. I'm gonna create a user called Brian. I'm just gonna create a simple password here. You'll wanna create one that is, if you're gonna allow some sort of access from other computers, you will need this to be the complex password. All right, I now have a user. And so let's go ahead and type that in here. Here would be the repository, currently no files. So we're now going to have to install the client that's gonna to connect to this and upload the files. And then we'll have to add some files into the project to put on there. So next we're gonna be doing Tortoise SVN. And so once you get that installed, get it down, or actually get it downloaded and put it onto your desktop, and then go ahead and let's run the installer here. So click next, next to accept the license agreement. If you wanna have command line tools, you can go ahead and enable this here, but uh, I use the right click option. And then click install. Yes to give it permissions. and then finish. So now let's go ahead and we will want to create a, a folder that we're gonna store these files in. And so anywhere that you want to have the space to store this. So it needs to be a place that's gonna be able to store your main project plus an extra copy of it because SVN keeps a total backup copy locally. So I'm gonna create a new folder here on my desktop called Unreal Game. And so here I have an empty folder called Unreal Game on my desktop. Right click on it to, now you'll see the option SVN Checkout. And so that's going to allow you to put in the settings for that Visual SVN server and connect to it. So to get this address, 
inside of this Visual SVN server, you want to click on the Unreal game and take a look at this address it has up here. It has HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash whatever your computer name is forward slash SVN forward slash the name of the repository. So you want to put that here. And this computer name will be whatever your whatever your computer's name is. It won't be the same as what I'm typing in right now. I'm going to hit OK. And then you're going to want to type in the username and password that you entered earlier. Make sure you leave a save authentication checked, and that way you won't have to type in it every time that you go and update the repository. You will now see that it's updated to revision zero. So that's pretty much the revision that doesn't have anything in it. So now uh, I'm going to create a new project here and I'm going to copy the files into this. If you have an existing project, you would then move all the files into that folder. But let's go and create something really quick just for testing purposes so that we have files to put in here. All right, so now we're going to select a new project and then I'm just going to do sample project here. Now, if you try to type the existing, let's say you try to put the files in the same place of where this folder is. You see here how it project cannot be saved in a folder with existing files. This is kind of an extra step that you have to do to be able to get the files in here. So, Let's create Unreal Game Temp. Now, if you already have your project and its, its files exist already, you wouldn't run into that problem. You just would want to move them into this folder. But now I have my SVN folder, and then I have where my projects are currently. And so I don't need to do anything in here yet. So let's close this. I'm going to open up my source. And here's the destination. So I'm just going to move. You can either click, select them all, click, make sure it says move. Uh, if it doesn't, if it says copy or something like that, you'll want to hold down shift. All right, so now all these files are in here. Some of these files you don't want backing up, or actually the folders, you don't want backing up to your SVN. And so to do a, what you'll do is actually an ignore. So intermediate, that is a file that you do not need. And saved, you don't want that backing up to the SVN. Config and content and the project file you do. So on intermediate, right click on S Tortoise SVN, you'll see add to ignore list and then intermediate recursive. So recursively means that all the files and folders that are underneath that folder will also be ignored. They will not update and upload to the SVN. You'll want to do the exact same thing. Right click, Tortoise SVN, add to ignore list recursively for both of those files. Now, currently it isn't in the SVN. So let's go ahead and pull up the file list Still empty. So what we'll do here is right click in a blank area in that new Unreal game folder, and we're gonna choose SVN commit. It's now asking me, what files do I wanna back up currently? These are all new files, so this time it's gonna be all files. But if it were just in a small amount of changes, you would only see a few files listed here. So go ahead and click all, because we want all of these to go. And then your messages are important because these help you to remember what changes were made during that particular commit that you're in. So I'm gonna put this as initial commit. And now it is adding all of those files 
to the SVN. This first one will be the longest. And then you'll notice after this, they should be fairly quick unless you're adding a lot of big files. So select OK. And then let's go ahead and refresh the listing that's on that web page for the repository. Now you can see all those files are, are stored in that repository. And so let's go ahead and open up the project. And I'm now comfortable that whatever I do in the project, I can always get back to this point. Let's go through and, and let's break the project. Just gonna hit force delete. We'll just pretend this is something that I did. Now you can see the project is broken and I don't have that file. I don't remember how to recreate that file. I'm kind of stuck at the moment. Without doing a bunch of work, I've just broken the whole game. And so what I can do is let's go ahead and close the whole project now. Right click in a blank area, go to Tortoise SVN and choose as revert. Revert is now going to give me the option to put the files exactly as they were back to this point in time. Now there's some other files that were changed by the because I deleted that file. If I let's say that these files had some changes that I actually did want, this file is missing. I could just choose that one file and restore just it. But I'm confident that these files weren't changes that I made. They were only because that file went missing. So we're, we'll select all of those files. We'll hit OK. It has now reverted back those files to the original ones. So let's go ahead and open up the project again. Let's hit play. All right, now we have a working version of the uh, the flying game again. And so if this were my project, as you can see, I now have flying pond back, and it's exactly as it was originally. But let's say that I make a change that I now want to be the working copy. So let's say that I go through and initially uh, I want to do a print string and I want to show as the, as the vehicle flies, I want to show the current speed. So this is a new feature that I've added to my game. Let's go ahead, we'll compile and save that. We'll hit play. You can now see at the top left, it says I'm going 500. Oh, now I'm going even faster. You see my speed rising. So I now have a speedometer. I've reached my max speed. So let's say that's a new feature that I've added and I want to have this now be the new base of my game. So make sure everything is saved. I always do fix up redirectors for good luck. And then right click in a blank area inside of that project folder and choose SVN commit. This is now going to send the files that have been changed to the server. So I want to put fancy speedometer. So I now have a fancy speedometer added to my game. I hit OK. It's now you see, it was at revision two. So let's go and refresh this. Now I have content. You can see a second, a few seconds ago, this file was changed. Under blueprints. So the flying pond dot U asset, which is the uh, Unreal Engine fo file for this, was changed. So that is up to date. Now what I could do, I could go look at revision one. And I could find that file in there and I would see that they're, they're different files. So now I can go through and make major changes to my files. And if, if I have any issues, I can go to Tortoise SVN and revert, go back. You can see now it's current. So there's no other files in there. Let's say I want to delete all the other files that are in that aren't a part of this. So all those intermediate and saved files. If I click delete unversioned items, those will be listed in there, but you need to be careful because 
in here there might be new files that you created that aren't a part of the versioning system yet so if you're doing this before you do a commit commit you may delete a file that you added to the system afterwards so just be careful of that keep that in mind as you're working through this that you're not removing files that you don't need but i'm going to do this because it's only going to delete my intermediate and save files i now have a fresh uh, folder set here and that the fact that I ignored those files, remember we had right clicked and, and chosen to unversion these, add to ignore list. That's going to be saved. That is actually stored. The backup copy of the project and all those settings are saved in this .svn folder, which is a hidden folder. So you're not seeing it. So you don't have to worry about those, even though they're gone, um, having it remember that you don't have to redo it every time. But this is how I go through and I'm able to make major changes and test things out without having to worry about breaking the project. Um, I can always revert back. And if I created multiple folders here, I could have multiple projects that would all be listed in under repositories. So I could have Unreal Game. I could have Shooter Game. I could have whatever I want in here, separate ones as separate folders here. And I can back up, revert. Uh, I could you know, commit and revert and do everything and it would only affect that repository. So this is the way uh, to have a local SVN. It's similar to the concept of GitHub. Uh, I use one that's actually on Linux, so they do have Linux servers, but I'm showing you the one for Windows just because I think that's gonna be most likely what your average uh, viewer is actually using. So hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, I encourage you, if you have any questions, come jump on our Discord. I'll have the link in the description here. And like and subscribe if you have any comments or suggestions or questions. You can also leave them in the comment section below. So thank you very much, and I will catch you guys later.